you don't use PRS, I would ask a question out and, oh, two or three people might answer it or might not. And I would wait and nothing would happen. And then as soon as I say, okay, I'm gonna use PRS on this one, all the heads go down and they start bringing out the pencils and they're, they're immediately engaged with the material. And that's to me is what's the most important thing. It just helps to open another avenue of, of communication. A classroom can be just a place where you observe, but I think it's much more effective if they're also working with me and staying with me. And uh, the PRS really helps me to do that. UMass Amherst has been a leader in the, the personal response systems for uh, forever. The Davis Educational Foundation helped establish PRS in large lecture classrooms across campus by awarding the university two significant grants. As a capstone to this initiative, the President's Office in 2007 awarded UMass Amherst a professional development grant to support a community of PRS best practice fellows. This program was developed by the collaborative efforts of the Center for Teaching, the Center for Educational Software Development, and the Provost's Office. The PRS Best Practice Fellows Program assembled a community of experienced faculty users to share ideas and experiences and to discuss how best to use this educational tool in the classroom. These fellows also conducted two campus-wide workshops and compiled an online best practices website to assist other instructors. Teaching is what I do and what I love to do, and so having the opportunity to share stories and to hear how other people are using this, this um, uh, tool in the classroom is, is really very, very helpful, but it's also just, just fun for me. Designing good questions and generating questions that will generate discussions. Um, right now, that's the most uh, challenging thing, but also the most fun thing. We all know as faculty when things are working and when things are not working. It's not hard for us to figure out if the students seem to be with it in the class and staying on top of it and enjoying the process and when they're not. And we all want to think that we can do that every time we walk into the classroom. I think PRS gives you a, an opportunity to, to, to keep that going a little longer, but it is work. You have to think about what kind of question is best um, for this technology. The technology is not just add-on. The technology is a, a way to help you to get your points across and kind of force you to think. And this is what the Center for Teaching's role is to help faculty to think about the pedagogy behind the technology. Before I used PRS, like many instructors, I was relatively good at the rhetorical question. Um, how many of you think this would be an important part of the cell? Or some biology-ish sort of question. And the students learn quickly to wait for me to get tired of waiting for them. And then I would, of course, say, well, clearly the membrane is an important, and, and go forward. And it was not the way to get students to participate most effectively. Um, now when I write PRS questions, I find that the best participation comes when I pose a problem that the students have to argue about that it's not clearly true or false or may not have only a single right answer but may well be argued successfully more than one way. That type of feedback you can't get any other way because students won't raise their hands. You know, the, the shy students just won't or students won't necessarily contribute. Students won't necessarily stay engaged the whole, whole 50 minutes if, if you don't have something like that. It, it also breaks up the rhythm of the class, and that can be good and bad, but it's, it's good to mix things up a little bit, and it's an, it's an effective way to do that. We sit around a table with people that have used it a lot, some of the best teaching minds at the university, and I thoroughly enjoy it. I mean, it's a once every, say, three or four week opportunity to hear about other faculty's experience and faculty that care about teaching, that have thought about this technology, and um, it has absolutely made it, a, it made it better for me. I mean, it's made me think more about how I can make myself better in the classroom with PRS, and it's given me a lot of hands-on, concrete things to try. PRS Best Practice Fellows, um, uh, it's been a wonderful experience. It's uh, very interesting always to work with other faculty around 
just issues of teaching and learning to begin with, but really working on uh, coming up with a set of best practices around this kind of technology that's now in widespread use on campus. The PRS Best Practice Fellowship has really been a great experience for me. Um, I've really changed the way I've I use PRS in my class as a result of that because different people have so many different ways of using PRS and we've learned from each other and I've applied almost the next day some of the things that I've learned so it's been really fruitful for me.